the news I know, though I don't meet the person, I haven't met George Bush, but because it is shown on CNN, I can judge as an intelligent person that what he's doing, what they're showing is correct. But I can tell you, I'm doing jihad. Alhamdulillah, I'm doing jihad. I'm striving. I'm striving the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jihad means to strive, to struggle. And that's what I told to the American police also. I'm doing jihad. I'm striving and struggling. What he's doing, I don't know. I haven't met him. And neither will Allah question you on the day of judgment that did Osama bin Laden do jihad or not. Thank you, Dr. Yes, sister. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I'm speaking on behalf of my parents. My question is that, uh, what is your advice to the Arab world to help the Muslim media, especially in India? The question posed by the young brother asked on behalf of the parent that what is my advice to the Arab world as far as helping Muslims in particular in India is concerned. See, depending upon times, time keeps on changing. A few decades earlier, the Arabs came to India to do business. India is on top of the world. And mashallah, many of us Indians, when they give zakat, it even helped many of the Arabs in the country. Now, Allah has given the black gold to the Arabs, mashallah. Now they are rich. And now we find that the Indians come to the Arab world to do jobs, to do business. Coming to Dubai, coming to Saudi, alhamdulillah. The thing is, as far as my advice is concerned, that as far as the Muslims are concerned, I feel what I said earlier, that it's the duty of every Muslim to convey the message. And more facility Allah has given you, Allah will question you more. On the day of judgment will be asked, the wealth Allah gave you, what have you done with it? So my advice is, the more facility Allah has given you, Allah has made you the torch bearers, has given you the black gold. So you have to utilize this for the spread of Islam. Not only in India, Alhamdulillah, in India there is no problem, mashallah. But there are people, the Indians, mashallah. India has got problems, I'm not saying no. But Alhamdulillah, we can take care of ourselves. There are people who do require, there are orphans in India, orphans are living in other parts of the world. And people are supporting them, Alhamdulillah, there's no problem at all. But generally, as a general answer, as far as the Arabs are concerned, because Allah has given the black gold, they should see to it that they spread the message of truth. Personally, I know many Arabs, with their pocket money, they can open five to ten channels with their pocket money. Five to ten channels, Allah has given them the wealth. So surely my request to them is that they utilize the niyama Allah has given for the good things, for the spread of the deen, so that it will benefit them in the akhra. It will not benefit Islam. Islam doesn't require you and me. It is for their own benefit. Allah says in the Quran, Allah does not require you, but you require Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So surely on the day of judgment, it will help them to enter Jannah. The next question. Hello, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa ta'ala wa barakatuh. I am Nawaz Agamat. I am working Al-Qaeda trading. No, Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda trading. <laughs> Salesman. Now, music is Yaram. Everybody, everybody, Muslims know. Now we are starting Peace TV, Alhamdulillah. Media is very important advertisement. Advertisement, music is haram or halal? Brother has asked that all the Muslims know that music is haram, but when we start a channel, there will be advertisement. So in advertisement, music is haram or halal. See, what is haram is haram. If it's haram in Saudi, it is haram in UAE, it is haram in USA, haram in India also. Unless your life is in danger. Like alcohol is haram. But if your life is in danger, alcohol is the only drug that can save you. That is the only exception to the rule. If your life is in danger. So here, without advertisement, inshallah, our channel won't be in danger. See, that's why I said that running a channel is difficult. Running a channel on Islamic lines is more difficult. 
Therefore, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he keep us on the hidayah. If we cannot turn on Islamic lines, we will close the channel, inshallah. If we cannot turn it on the Islamic lines, we will close the channel. Because being on the Islamic Sharia is more important than starting a channel. We should not compromise. We can't reach to the truth with haram means. What is haram is haram. What we can do, we can substitute with halal. We can substitute with halal. For example, if the musical instruments are haram, the duff is allowed. We can use natural sounds like the gushing of water, like thunder, lightning, chirping of birds. If you see the programs of IRF, in the starting, the effects are, you will not find that music is missing, though we don't use music. But the way it is presented with the natural sounds, etc., Alhamdulillah, it has, if not equal, somewhere close to the effect. But a good effect, it will not take you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will take you towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you can use natural sounds and we will not allow any ads which are haram. Any ads which are haram, whether it be ads containing of alcohol, whether ads of interest-based companies or banks, whether it be involving or exposing of women, etc. Those who want to give halal ads with halal means the most welcome, otherwise we don't require them. We require the help of Allah, which is more important. Hope that answers the question. Yes, brother. Hi. <laughs> Just one more question. In the Quran 96, chapter number 2, it says, created man out of a mere clot of congealed blood. I was uh, listening to uh, the Hindi translation, Urdu translation of this as well, a few days ago, and it did say that Khun ki boon se, I don't boon usse banaya. Now we know that, uh, like this, this is common knowledge now that it's that we're actually not born from a, you know, drop of blood. It's a drop of semen. So I do see a translation of another verse. It says, "Then fashioned we the drop." in brackets, semen, a clot of congealed blood, then fashion we the clot, a little lump. So that means it puts the blood in the second stage. But I, but I don't think blood comes to, towards the later stages of you being a doctor can probably throw more light. Sure. Well, you have asked the right person. Yeah. Quran said in Surah Nahal, chapter 16, verse 43, and Surah Amya, chapter number 21, verse number 7, Fasalu ali zikri in kundulat alamun. If you don't know, ask the person who knows. I'm not very knowledgeable, but in these few things, I'm knowledgeable, Alhamdulillah. I'm not a very knowledgeable person. I'm just a student of comparative religion, and I'm just a small doctor, MBBS. But this is my field of speciality. This same argument was given by Dr. William Campbell. There's a person by the name of Dr. William Campbell, who's a medical doctor, and got a PhD in writing a book against the Quran. He wrote a book saying there are 30 scientific errors in the Quran. And for eight years, no Muslim replied. So the American students, they called me for a debate and I went to US and Chicago a few years back and we had a debate on the topic, the Bible and the Quran in the light of science. And one of his arguments was the same, what you post, that the first two verses of the Quran to be revealed, or Surah Alaq, or Surah Ikra, chapter 96, verse number 1 and 2, it says, Ikra bismi rabbikal lazi khalaq, khalaqal insana min alaq. Read, recite or proclaim in the name of thy Lord who created, who created man from a congealed clot of blood. He said, that this was basically copied. The Greeks first thought that human beings are made from blood. It's an old theory which is proved wrong. And as a medical doctor know, yes, human beings are not made from blood. So Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he did a research. He copied from this Syrian who copied from that Greek and a big list he made, research. And he said, see, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa knows Billah. Prophet Muhammad, he copied from the Syrian from this guy and he gave a big Lineage where he got it from, his research, his PhD did. He's a PhD doctor and a medical doctor. Then he further goes to say that all the translation you read, it says blood, blood, blood. But latest, some of the Muslims translate alaka as a leech-like substance. He knew it, which you don't know. He knew it. But in defense he's saying, we have to take the meaning what was present at the time of revelation of the Quran. We can't take a meaning which is understood today. At the time the Quran was revealed, no one understood it as leech and he's right. Therefore, all the contemporary tafasils you read, all say blood. None of them say alaka is 
लिचलैक्स अफेयर 